All righty. I think that we're ready. Okay. Let's see. Nice to meet you, Miss Victoria. I'm Rachel. Nice to meet you as well. How are you doing today? Doing good. Thank you. So today I was going to be showing you how to play a game that um, I've been utilizing in my counseling sessions, and it's called Boom Boom Balloon. Try to get it close so you can get a good picture of it or what it looks like. <laughs> Interesting. And it's definitely a pretty fun game. And so in order to uh, begin playing the game, it does have some setup pieces that I'll be going through with you today to show you how to get this game set up. And okay. so it comes in like this little contraption. And the instructions are very simple of how to piece the contraption together. And so I don't I don't have it all the way put together. So what you would simply do is there are arrows on each of these uh, separate pieces, which shows you how they snap into each other. And you kind of just press the leg piece and the arm piece into the arrows and it just instantly snaps in place. Okay. Once you have the setup complete where both pieces are in place, then you will continue to add this piece to the rest of the system. And that just snaps in place as well. And then you have your base piece, which also has indicators on the bottom of it. You can't really see within the device, but it has these indicators right here uh -huh. on the side, the cooks, the grooves, and they just kind of snap into place. And okay, it holds so the whole everything game Everything kind of has an arrow, like everything's pretty well marked. Right. It's difficult to see the arrows because it's the arrows are green and the contraption is green. But if you pay attention to where the arrows are, they just kind of easily snap in place from there. Okay. And so once you have your game set up, I'm going to lower this a little bit. You may not be able to see much of my face because I want you to see the game. And so once you lower, once I lower it, you have your game set up and then you add your balloon. And your balloon must be blowed up inside the game device. And once you have your balloon blown up, they have some grooves on that base piece. You uh -huh. just gonna wrap your balloon around that and it holds your air in for you, okay? Oh, cool. Yeah. And so now we have our balloon set up. And so there are a few more pieces to add. Wow, so my six-year-old Bowie, Bowie Brewer is gonna love this. That is so cool. So can the kid blow the balloon up? Um, outside of session, if you're playing it at home, uh -huh. I don't see why the kid wouldn't be able to blow it up. However, in session, I am the only one blowing up the balloon just because of safety precautions. You do have to put your face and your mouth kind of on this area okay. and just to eliminate the passing of germs and things. You don't want too many people faces and mouth on that area. And right. so in session, I am the only one blowing up the balloon just for that safety precaution. Okay. And so once you have your balloon in, then you add what we have comes with the game, our, our sticks. And they just easily snap in place. Um, however, I do allow kids to put the sticks inside the game when I set up. But I also demonstrate how they go in because sometimes you can push too far and it puts pressure on the balloon before it's time to start the game. Mm -hmm. And so these just snap in place here. I don't know if you saw how that kind of went in a little bit too far. Oftentimes, yeah. you just kind of push them on in. And yeah, my heart stopped for a second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And one more to add. And so from here, your game is set up and um, complete. It is ready to be played. And so how you play it is it comes with a die. Uh -huh. and the die has numbers. It ranges from three, two, and one. And you just simply roll the die. And whatever the die says, that's the number of clicks that each stick would get. And it will put pressure on the blue. Okay. So what do you feel like this might help Bowie with specifically? Like what who is this good for, maybe? 
So I feel like this game is uh, good for individuals who have poor interoception awareness skills. And what that means is the ability to identify what's going on internally inside your body. So our body always gives us warning signs um, before we consciously or unconsciously know what's happening um, with ourselves. So for example, uh, if your mouth gets dry, that's a warning sign that I'm thirsty. I might need to have something to drink. Or um, a good example um, that I use often is when we become hungry, what happens? Mm -hmm. Our stomach may start to rumble. We may get fatigued. We may experience headache. All of these are internal warning signs that our body is giving us to let us know that we're about to become dysregulated before dysregulation actually happens. And so I feel that this would be a good game to utilize to help individuals increase those interoception awareness skills so they have the ability to recognize internally what's going on before they become dysregulated. Okay, so does dysregulated just like mean like upset? Or no. Like, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Like out of sorts or what would you say that means exactly? Dysregulation means um, the inability to become not in tune or not aware with what's going on or becoming thrown off consciously or unconsciously and not feeling okay. And then I'm at my baseline as a balance. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so, you know, with anxiety, don't, I mean, this looks like kind of like an ancient torture device, like just <laughs> looking at, I mean, it wouldn't does. it maybe make anxiety worse? You say? Um, or it, I don't think it will make it worse because what you're working on is not the anxiety itself, but you're working more towards of uh, those warning signs before anxiety actually happens. Oh, and so oh, okay. anxiety itself uh, causes an individual to become dysregulated. But like I mentioned before, with poor interoception awareness skills, it helps you uh, increase the ability to recognize the warning signs before you actually achieve or become dysregulated. Okay. So it tells you what to look for before you get there. Right. It gives so, you those signals and those warning signs. Okay. Okay. And so the, do you ever have like for Bowie, do you think the pop of the balloon? Cause it does eventually pop, right? That's yes, it does pop. And sometimes it pops on its own without anybody even touching it. Okay. That was <laughs> I was going to ask too. So do you think that that would freak Bowie out or is that something that we want to work towards like resiliency wise or what? So uh, ultimately, before even beginning playing the game or setting the game up, we want to have that conversation either with parents or with the child, if it's age appropriate, um, as far as a response of have they had any history of trauma? What are their trigger symbols? Uh, would a balloon pop and be something to trigger a uh, flashbacks or memory from a traumatic experience or would that cause them to become dysregulated? You kind of want to uh, do some pre-questioning before actually playing the game so you know ahead of time if this would be a good game for okay. the client or not okay so i i get what you're saying about like helping him become aware of what he's feeling before so like i really like the idea of like what how do you you know what do you do when you feel thirsty that helps you know the feelings you have when you're feeling thirsty let you know that you're feeling thirsty so like mm -hmm. how can i talk to bowie about paying attention to his body, you know, as related to anxiety while we're playing this so that it's helpful for him. So uh, usually how I would present this to talk to Bowie um, mm -hmm. to recognize what's going on in the body is playing the game and then processing what's happening in the middle of the game as we're playing. So for example, I like to draw little faces on our balloons here and there. So let's say, um, uh, client is feeling sad today or something let me see what i can get going here how oh, cool you can draw on the you can draw on our balloon so let's say we came with a face like that. I don't know if you uh -huh. can really see it. It's a little <laughs> sad and worried. Uh -huh. And so I would go through the motion. We would begin our game and we would roll the die. Let's see. We got two. And so this would stick would get two clicks. Uh-huh. It's client's turn. Woo, three. Three always makes me jump. Uh. Let's see. One, two, 
three. And I'm just gonna do it one more time to see what I get. I got another two, so let me see. So we'll go one, two. And so you can see how it pushes that pressure on the balloon. Uh -huh. And even when watching you watch the game, I saw some faces. Uh -huh. and so in that moment, I would say, tell me about that face. What does that face mean? Um, and depending on the response, oftentimes it would be, I'm feeling nervous or I just, I'm not sure. And so when I get that, I'm not sure answer. That's when I go through processing. Well, tell me what's happening inside your body right now. What mm -hmm. do we feel internally inside our body? And oftentimes, um, depending on the age, I may get a response or I may get another, I'm not sure. And I would just go off based off what I observed. Well, I see your hands are getting tight. I see mm -hmm. weirdness on our face. What do those <laughs> gestures mean? And oftentimes it kind of hones into, okay, I am feeling something in my body. Let me target what is actually going on. And so after I made that observation, we continue to play some more. And so we roll and as we're playing, I got another three. Let's see, one, two, three here. Let's say I rolled again. I got a two here. One, two. And so I was like, you made that face again. What's that <laughs> face about? And then it helps increase their awareness to my stomach is beginning to turn. Or mm -hmm. I'm feeling like my muscles are tightening and my hands are becoming sweaty. And then so then for what we move to trying to identify emotions and feelings based off those warning signs that our body is giving. So that would be a good way to discuss with Bowie what's going on while he's playing this game. OK, so if it if it like maybe. So you can draw faces on it. It doesn't necessarily have to be like a face that's already on. like we can make stuff up. So it sounds like there's sure. no like right way to play it for sure. OK. Cool. So we can kind of adjust it to what Bowie needs. And then like, so what if the, like, if, what if we're just sitting here processing and that pops, does it like I'm talking to Bowie and it just pops. How do you usually handle that with your kids? And so in that moment, if we are just kind of processing things from the game and it pops, because like I said, it'll pop on its own sometimes. Um, I would model deep breathing in that moment. I would maybe go woof. I would model deep breathing and my uh -huh. own self-regulation uh, for that kid to be able to observe me regulating myself to become regulated. And then we might go through and work towards some distress tolerance skills, because in the moment when you become dysregulated and things happen unexpectedly that causes dysregulation, that's a good time to work on some distress tolerance skills to better learn how to uh, maintain regulation in a moment when the unexpected happens and our body becomes thrown off. Okay. That makes sense because just looking at it, I'm having a little <laughs> anxiety myself. So the stuff I should be asking Bowie as we're playing for me, it was like, you know, paying attention to our body, um, how he's feeling, noticing, and then taking time to stop and kind of talk to him about it in between, mm -hmm. um, being prepared for, you know, if it did sort of pop on its own, like how to kind of help him. Because, you know, that could happen with anything. Mm -hmm. um, so my kid, I can tell you, Bo is going to be like super pumped um, when we play this, like real high adrenaline. Um, I don't want him to be like that, like all day. So, I mean, what is there something you recommend us for like calm him down or bring him back down after we play? Um, yes, for sure. Um, definitely just working on um, calming skills. Mm -hmm. is a great way to kind of maintain regulation after we play because i could see how a lot of kids adrenaline gets to pumping and they're super hype and yeah. excited about playing the game and that could go on all day depending on if we decide to bring them down and so um in regards to helping that client bring down we might do some um grounding skills which would be you know body scanning um, paying attention to what's happening also inside our body after playing the game to kind of work on a more relaxed relaxation state. Uh, okay. Deep breathing is good to do utilize there as well. Um, what could be some other skills to utilize? Hmm. I'm thinking this is my thinking face. Looks like the balloon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, 
doing maybe like some slow exercising things that will slow your heart rate down. So maybe stretching. Or, yeah, we stretch a lot. Mm -hmm, going for a walk. Um, okay. Would be helpful. Things that would just slow that heart rate down to reduce okay. that increase hyper activity that. that may be happening there. Yeah, I could have maybe like a healthy snack for him right after and we could just chill mm -hmm. and talk about it. And said, okay, so that could be helpful. Um, let's see. So, I mean, is there something that I need to get with this? Is the game by itself okay? Or, I mean, is there like a book or, or something or, or music or anything that goes with it that you would recommend? So, the game by itself comes with everything that you need as far as this whole okay. setup. However, I would recommend um, a book that would go along to increasing interception awareness skills and activities. So you can just have a uh, further education in regards to what this means and how do I utilize this. And this book is called The Comprehensive Assessment for Interception Awareness, um, The Eighth Sensory System, and it is by Kelly Maller. Kelly Maller. Okay. Okay. Is that something I can just get at the bookstore? And So from what I've seen as far as this book, um, it's definitely available online. So through Kindle, um, through Amazon, you can also order hard copies. And I'm sure if you did seek out bookstores, maybe like Books A Million, um, that they might have a copy there for you as well. Okay. So it's something like you don't have to have a degree or whatever to get it or no, something. Like no, not at all. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so that's all that I can think of for baby Bowie. Is there anything else that you can think of? Uh, no, not at this moment. Um, okay. A reminder that, you know, with playing this game, you really just want to hone in and work towards having the individual or having Bowie understand what's going on inside his body and ways to uh, put feelings or emotion with what's, what he's experiencing internally to be able to also increase that emotional talent is very well, especially if you're utilizing this for Bobby, who's age four or five, that maybe don't have much awareness of feelings yeah. and emotions. So specifically just want to hone in and target those areas when playing this game. Okay. Well, cool. And so if, is it okay if I were to get back in touch with you, we could do this again. If in case like I come up with something and when we're talking about it, Oh, yes, for sure. Please do. Please. Do. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. You guys are always so good about keeping in touch and helping us out with our kids and doing what we need to do. So um, I'll catch up with you next time and I'll let you set that balloon free or put it out of its misery, whichever one works <laughs> best for you. Uh, probably put it out of its misery. Ah, oh, it still didn't pop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go do some deep breathing. Thank you, Miss Victoria. All right, thank you, Miss Bruce. See you later. All right, bye-bye.